Pokemon, a game most of us grew up playing and still do. I have been a huge fan by myself and whenever I see a picture like this or this or this, I get very nostalgic and think about the good old days where the biggest problem was when to use the Master Ball. It was always Mewtwo. Well, except the very first time, luckiest Rhyhorn ever. Now several years later and as a game dev, I thought it is about time to recreate this awesome experience from back then. In this series, we will learn how to create a mini Pokemon-like game with turn-based combat. At the end of the series, we will have a ready-to-publish mobile game and we will have the knowledge of creating any crazy mobile game idea. If you haven't watched the first episode, I highly suggest you to do so right now before continuing this one. What? You're still here? Okay then, I'll show you the sprite sheet of my own Pokemon trainer character. Here it is, it includes idle and walking sprites in all directions. A character inspired by a Greek mythology hero, Hercules, but a little bit younger. So in the export settings, when exporting for Unity, choose PNG24 with transparency enabled. This canvas has 80 by 80 dimensions and when clicking on save, your sprite sheet is ready to use. Now you can import it to Unity with a simple drag and drop. There it is. But with the sprite as it is, you can't really make any changes to it because it's just an image file. A more convenient way is to directly drag and drop the Photoshop file into Unity. This feature changes up the whole process and here is why. When opening the file from Unity, Photoshop opens up and the sprite is ready for editing. Be careful though, since the file in Unity is a separate new file that you can find when clicking show in explorer. It is now in the assets folder of our game. Let me show you how easy it is to edit an existing sprite of your game. Our character gets a nice blue hairstyle, some others should be jealous of this. When done, you only need to save and the file is updated automatically in Unity as well. Isn't this the best thing ever? Now you can see how blurry our image currently is. Don't worry though, there is nothing wrong, we just need to change the filter mode to point no filter for a crisp clear pixel style. Next. We will need to change the format as well in order to use the original colors just like in Photoshop. Click override for Android and make sure that the compression quality is set to normal. For the format I found out that RGBA 32 bit is the best option available. You can obviously see why. If your game though has too many sprites and some are not as important as your main character, you can also use RGBA 16 bit in order to lower the image size. After that, we also want to change the sprite mode to multiple. This means that one image consists of more than one sprite. We are ready for the sprite editor. The easy and fastest way is to select automatic and slice through the canvas. That's pretty much self-explained and does the work for you lazy devs. You can still change the selection though and also name them correctly. And that is what I'm doing right now. Done. You can see all the separated sprites and you can use them as you like. Ok, let's transform our little Hercules back to normal. Before we continue, let me show you some quality settings that will boost your mobile performance. In the project settings, click on quality. There are many different options, but we will go with a medium quality for this project. The one thing to change in order to see a drastic change in performance is the V-Sync. Here select Don't Sync. Great, back to Herc. Do you know the saying? A game is only just organized as the developer behind it. What? No? Well, maybe because I just came up with it. But for real, always have different folders for sprites, animations, scripts and so on. Finally, with the newly cut out sprites, we are able to create the animations for the character. Just like the Pokemon games, he will have an idle animation which is basically one static frame 
and a walk animation in all four directions. In case you want to learn how to animate your character, click here for a more in-depth tutorial. With the animations done, it's about time to create the first script. We will code in C Sharp and are using Visual Studio. The script will be assigned to our character and will be responsible for his movement. I will quickly do my magic and boom! Just like this, you have in a matter of seconds a fully functional script. A movement tutorial will also be available in the description below. Hercules needs a rigid body 2D with a gravity scale set to zero and the freeze rotation selected. With that, he is ready to get the movement script and run through the game scene. See how small he is? Well, nothing so mythical about him right now, so change the pixels per unit on his sprite to 16. Much better, although with the start of the game he wants to show us his back for some reason. I will fix that another time. Right now, I am using the arrow keys to move around. It is possible to move in every direction, even diagonally, which isn't really needed here. I decided to change the way we move and instead of using move towards, I used the simple transform translate method. Let's test it out. Whoa, Hercules is on fire. Even Hermes can compete here with that speed. This happened because we changed the movement method, so the move speed variable needs to change accordingly. This looks much better. Now to remove the diagonal movement, this if statement should do the trick. And it did. We can now move only up, down, left and right. So after achieving all this, I relaxed for a couple of hours at the pool and worked on my summer shiny tan. Tan reveal at 300 likes, you know what to do. Back at home, I decided to add all left-faced sprites to the game in order to make it easier to change from state to state. I also made the walking sprites a bit shorter to achieve a better feeling in the walking animation. What do you think? I think Hercules is ready to take over the pixel world and be the very best Pokemon trainer. In the next episode, we will set up the canvas for mobile devices and I am going to show you how to scale your UI objects to every resolution. We will also see how to move the character with touch buttons instead of the keyboard and much more interesting things. If you enjoyed the video, you could just like it, you know? I mean, it's free and takes about 0.1 seconds. So do it. And once you are there, consider subscribing. It really helps a lot and keeps the series going. I have to mention again that in this series we will focus more on the mobile aspect of development and that's why I go over very fast at topics like drawing, animating or even small scripts. For all of that, I have separate video tutorials on my channel that you can check out at any time. For even more game dev talk, join Savu's game dev club discord server and let's chat. And with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao!